the last hands-on video which I made on GraphQL was almost three years ago. Since then, things have evolved and there are a lot of new advancements in terms of leveraging GraphQL and exposing GraphQL APIs from the data stores directly. In this video, we are going to see how we can leverage AWS's App Sync without writing any piece of code to expose DynamoDB data as a GraphQL API. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. First things first, let's look at the architecture diagram. I'm going to leverage my free tire account for this particular example. I'll be setting up a DynamoDB table, which is going to host some book information. This is the same example, which we saw in our example with Spring Boot. This is the same books example. I'm going to have the same fields. In this case, I'm going to use DynamoDB to store my data. And I'll be creating something called AWS App Sync, which can expose GraphQL APIs based on the integrations with different data sources. And here I'm going to use DynamoDB as a data source. And I'll also be importing the DynamoDB table schema into the AppSync's GraphQL schema. So that way I don't have to create the schema like how I did it in Spring Boot. Here AWS can directly use the DynamoDB table structure to create schema out of the box. So we are going to do that here in this video. And finally, I'm going to use a endpoint to access the data from AppSync. I'll be showing you via Postman on how you can query GraphQL endpoint and retrieve the data. And all these are going to be done without writing any single piece of code. So let's get started. Let me log into my AWS console. This is my AWS console. Right now I am in the Ohio region. You can select whichever region you want. Uh, this is the default region which I logged into. So I'm just going to retain it. Uh, the first thing is DynamoDB table creation. So let's go to DynamoDB. I already navigated, so I have it in my recent options here. Let me go to DynamoDB. I'll create a new table and I'm going to call this particular table as books. Uh, the primary key is something which is mandatory. I'm going to use the ISN for each book as the primary key because that's unique for a book, right? So we also have other fields like title, authors, publisher, and also published date and things like that. So for now, I'm going to give only ISN as the primary key and let me create the table. So the table is getting created here. Once the table got created, I'm going to add a dummy data so that I can add the different columns which I want to add within this particular table. I'm going to create a new item. So I'll just create a entry. For example, I'm going to add some dummy entry. Uh, so I'm going to call the ISN as one, two, three. Uh, let me add a new item. So I'll add a string. Um, that's what we had here. I think we had title. Let's go into the schema here and let's use the same schema. So we had ISN as string, title, publisher also as string, and then publish date, and then author, which is a list. So I'm going to use the same. So the next one is title. Now I'll be adding a title of a book. So for instance, I'm going to use uh, the reactive spring book, which was created by Josh Long. So I've added that. Uh, obviously, the next one is publisher. Let's add Josh Long itself as publisher. Published date. Obviously, this is just a, a example, so I'm just using a string. But if you have a date, obviously use the date parameter. So for now, I'll just say it as October 2020. That's the published date. Also, I need to add the authors. So this is where authors is a string because there could be a case where you have multiple authors. So I'll just add a author and then append one particular author, which is Josh Long done so this should be adding one entry so see here i have one entry with author uh, josh long and then publish date as october and then publisher as josh long and then title of the book is reactive spring based on this particular table content i should be able to create my schema in app sync so let me go to app sync i'll just navigate to app sync i'll open it in a new tab so if you don't know what is app sync app sync is a way for you to create a graphql api within aws 
by integrating it into different data sources for example rds is one data source or dynamodb is another or you can plug it into lambda or even http endpoints and create graphql endpoints out of appsync and you can directly use the appsync api to use it in your mobile application or web application or for your consumers so i'm going to create a new api here uh, there are different options for you to create a new api within the app sync api so i'm going to use something called as import dynamodb table so this is going to import my schema directly from the table so i'll just say next uh, i can select the region by default my region is us east 2 so i've selected that uh, the table name for me to import since i selected dynamodb it knows that okay i'm going to select it from a table so i can select the table which i created which is books uh, obviously you can leverage existing im roles if you have but i don't have any so i'm going to say create a new role here you can also configure the fields which you want to import so i'm going to mention all the fields which i want to add here so the second field is title the first field was isn because that was the primary key so it by default picked it i can have it as required or i can remove it but let's have it as required because i want to query a book based on the isn if I remove it, I can I should be able to query without ISIN. Basically, it will return all the books. So the next one was uh, publisher published date. That's it. So I'm going to click on create. This should take me to the um, create resource with the name. So I'm going to give this name as so the name of my resources books GraphQL API. This is going to create a new api by importing all the table structures and then it's going to create so if you look at it it's already did it right so i have uh, mutations i have queries etc now there is a way for us to query the uh, dynamodb table from the aws console itself and this is what you can use so this is the query option within the books graphql api using which you can query the dynamodb table using a graphql api so for example, I am going to say query my, let's say I, I will just remove these, right? And I'm going to say, get me all the books, which has Hyson one, two, three. So I'll just say, give me Hyson, uh, give me title, give me author. So if you don't know what is GraphQL API, obviously this is not a good video to get started. Take a look at my video on what is GraphQL and you can come back to this video to see how you can leverage GraphQL to create and expose APIs from DynamoDB. Now coming back to this UI, I can just click on this query option and this should query all the data from the table and then it should show up. Uh, see that it's showing up already. So I queried the ISN123 and it showed that uh, the book name is Reactive Spring and the author is Josh Long. So I will, instead of authors, I'll just say publisher. Who is the publisher? Obviously publisher is also Josh Long. I'll also say published date. So let me query it should show october 2020 so this is how you can query the tables from the console now i want to show you how you can leverage the postman client and how you can query it so there is this option called settings here when you go to the settings option in the app sync you can see that it exposes an api url obviously if you don't want to have um, this kind of a fancy url you can configure it with route 53 use your own custom dns for example let's say techprimers.com and you can route those url into the app sync api endpoint so this endpoint will be something like uh, this slash graphql so i'm going to leverage this endpoint and i'm going to send some request to retrieve the data so let me go to postman uh, i have my postman client configured here i've opened it i've just pasted my url here uh, in order to access this API, I need to use my API key. So API key is the uh, authentication which is enabled by default. Obviously, there are different ways to authenticate this particular API. You can use IAM, you can use OpenID Connect, or you can use Amazon's Cognito user pools. So I'm going to use API key to make it simple. So let me go to the UI here and I will provide the API key here. Um, the headers should have the X API key as a key and the value should be this. Uh, obviously the return type is going to be json and also i'm going to send some message for example here i'm going to send something like this so in order to send messages to a graphql endpoint from a rest or a postman client you should follow this particular format you should provide the query 
the variables and the operations i'm going to keep it as null for now uh, inside the query you can paste whatever you want to send for example here in the queries i'm going to get whatever i pasted here i'm just getting everything from here and then using it here that's what i have done here so i'm querying the isn 123 and let's see what happens so let me click on the send option and see that i can see the response for isn 123 the title of the book is reactive spring publisher is josh long and it was published in october 2020 so this is how you can query um, using aws app sync with a graphql endpoint from postman obviously i want to create some records so in order to do that i can click on mutation and let me click on the create books option here and if i want to create some new records i can just enter them so i'm going to input some values here uh, for example let's me for example let's add a isn as 124 uh, publish date as the jan 2021 publisher as let's say orally title of the book is cloud native java let's see uh, and let's run this So the moment I click on the run option, it shows which mutation should I run. So I'm going to select the my mutation. So this should create a new book and then it should return the author. Obviously author, I did not pass the author. Now let's query one, two, three, four, and then see if we are able to retrieve the uh, new book, which we entered. Yeah, I can see the new book. Let's go to Postman and let's confirm that we are able to retrieve the new book as well. So I'll just say one, two, four, and then query it yeah cloud native java it was published by o'reilly and it was in jan let's go to dynamodb and then we can check uh, if we have the data as well so we can see that we have the data which got entered here so this is how you can leverage aws app sync obviously whatever i just showed i can uh, use the same create books option from um, from postman as well i can definitely use mutation instead of query so that we can create books within the dynamodb table i'll just summarize what we did initially we created a table called books and this table had isin as the primary key and we added few more columns we also entered a dummy value so that we can retrieve it we created aws app sync api to connect it with the dynamodb table and then we exported the schema so it could create a graphql api out of it Using the GraphQL API, we queried from the console. We also queried it from Postman. Also, by default, the app sync created create, update, and delete mutations as well. This is how you can leverage AWS app sync to query data from DynamoDB. I hope you were able to understand how you can leverage AWS app sync to create GraphQL APIs to expose data to your mobile applications or web applications. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.